All right, next, uh, I have a theory I want to share with you and our viewers about the Nintendo Switch because I stumbled upon this the other day when I was thinking about the most recent rumors that we talked about last week about the system having 4 gigs of RAM and uh, like 32 gigs onboard storage and 16 gig game cards because even though I love Nintendo it kind of baffled my, me a little bit like I was trying to wrap my head around why and on earth Nintendo would go with those kind of specs when those are so obviously like less than the competition um, now my main reasoning for being concerned about this is that their new president has actually stated before that um, the NX at the time when he's talking about it was in sync with the times in terms of hardware so when I heard this rumor and I thought about that statement, I, I just couldn't see. Four gigs of RAM is in sync with the times when eight gigs is a standard right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just is like, that doesn't make sense. So I got thinking. Uh, I got thinking, I wonder how powerful and what kind of specs the absolute best tablets in the world have right now. Retail tablets. So I did a, a Google search, checked out a few lists of the top, top like whatever most powerful tablets, and pretty much the same two or three were at the top of each of these lists on various websites. And the number one was usually the iPad Pro, and number two was the Google the Google Pixel C tablet. Um, when I looked into the Pixel C. I noticed the price was very similar to the Pro, which leads me to believe they're probably pretty similar in terms of spec. But I don't know Apple stuff, so I didn't really venture in that direction. But I was glad I went with the Google C, Pixel C because those specs are almost identical to what we're hearing about the supposed specs of the Nintendo Switch. Are they running Tegra? Yes, Tegra X1 has okay. 3 gigs of RAM. And they come in a variety of storage options, obviously, like most tablets do. And uh, it had, like, uh, obviously micro SD card support and stuff. And the, res the, the tablet screen resolution was crazy high. It was uh, not, I think it was like 1800p, basically, like 2560 by 1800. Kind of not quite 4K, but way higher than HD. You know, some weird resolution like that. So, when I saw this, this is where I was thinking, man, I think Nintendo might actually be building a high-end gaming tablet. Uh, or, in other words, a tablet built specifically for gaming. Um, I knew that if I said this on this podcast, and I'm still, <laughs> I know what's going to happen now, that people would be in an uproar. Oh, it's going to be all mobile games, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? For you guys, I have an article on PixMotion.com you can read uh, detailing why that absolutely would not be the case. Even if this is literally the Pixel C wrapped in a package that says Nintendo on it, it's not going to be mobile games. Um, that doesn't mean some mobile games won't be there because I'm fairly certain that's the world we live in anymore <sighs> but, um, and see that <laughs> that reaction is exactly what I expect so here was my thing in the article I discuss what is it about mobile games that's so groan inducing uh, and there's like three or four main points that I came up with for one it's the simplistic and crappy usually controls because they, all they have to work with is touch and tilt. The touch and tilt methods are just pretty much garbage for most game genres that we play on consoles. Like I agree there. Try playing Shadow Mordor with a touch controller. It's not going to work out too well. There's just too many 
buttons and stuff or Assassin's Creed or pretty much any shooter and uh, so there's one problem right and then there's the then there's the whole issue with the free to play model that so many mobile publishers and developers follow which is a freaking blight on the industry um, now I point out in the article too that Nintendo they have spoken out on this before Iwata died he he had a very firm stance against the, the way free to play is because he felt it was deceptive and just not a very honest model in general and uh, you know I couldn't agree more and so when they started doing um, free to play kind of stuff they called it free to start so that didn't imply that this game was free and you could play it all you wanted but you know you had to earn X amount of coins before you could play more and then you know you're gated from playing more until you paid up and you know ads galore and all that crap nope they just said you can start playing for free and after an X amount of time then you can choose to buy it which is basically a demo <laughs> and that to me that's fine yeah and that works it works good um, technically Pokemon Go is that there's yeah. a lot more free aspect to that than there is paid but it's still it is free or free to start um, then there's things like battery life and uh, the lack of an actual controller and stuff like that I, I go through a whole bunch of different stuff in the article but the bottom line here is just I think that they are building a tablet and I think that they're aiming to fix the mobile gaming market. Well, I if anyone can do it, they probably can. Yeah. Um now I know a lot of people are probably thinking right now that yeah, there's a lot of companies that have done this before, if attached a controller to a tablet. Razer's done it. That company that's basically making what the Switch is. I can't <laughs> remember what that was even anymore. I feel like it was like Morpheus something. I can't remember. Whatever it was. But, yeah. I understand. A lot of companies have tried doing this. But it's like... They don't make their own games. And if they did, they wouldn't be Nintendo caliber games. Which immediately makes the switch like a highly desirable tablet if you like games because that's where nintendo's games are going to be <laughs> it's like it's not the same as just picking up your phone and jumping on the app store or the play store and picking a game it's it's like there's a lot of garbage in there google and apple don't really give a crap what's there so much like, it's curated mildly, but not like it will be with Nintendo. Nintendo, you know, they require their people to get, their developers to have a license and this and that. Well, you kind of have to in some cases with Apple, with mm -hmm. the developer, uh, well, the developer account's only $100 a year, so it doesn't really stop a whole lot of people from getting one. Mm-hmm. Whereas I do believe Nintendo actually has to approve you. Yes. Same so, thing with Sony and Microsoft. Yeah. Like Yeah. Well Microsoft's a little more easier now to, to get in you know, to get on there because essentially your Xbox One is a development kit if you want it to be. You know, uh, they you have to I do believe join their club, but uh it's a lot easier than it used to be. Yeah. Um, now, I want to present this uh, this analogy to the Ouya. We all know what the Ouya is because of its Kickstarter success. It was a huge, yeah. huge success. And it was actually really exciting leading up to its launch. It was exciting because it had like this crazy new super powerful mobile chip being the Tegra 3. And it was like, it was all mobile. It was essentially phone technology in a small, small box. 
but it was all being designed as a game console that was free and open. Um, not, you know, the box wasn't free, but you get what I mean. Open source, basically. So, it bombed. Big right? time. We all know this. It bombed, it bombed hard. But when you look at the reasons why, it's not because the hardware sucked. It's not because the hardware was mobile, even. It's because Ouya themselves, they didn't make a, any games. Which means that there was no set standard for quality on that thing. So, like, whether you know it or not, like, you probably do. Because I, I know a lot of viewers might not realize this. But when you buy a console, those first party games are really important because of the fact that they show what should and could be done on those respective consoles. Whereas if they don't have those, third parties are free to do what they think is most worth it. So imagine how hard EA would try with Battlefield if there was no Gears of War or Halo. Same thing could be said with Call of Duty. Like, they wouldn't have to try so much if there wasn't those first-party console exclusives that were, like, setting a standard, setting the bar for what those types of games should be. Or, like, uh, the new Tomb Raider games. I mean, I know that genre essentially was started by Tomb Raider, but... Naughty Dog kind of kicked it in the ass with yeah. Uncharted. Yeah, and even so. even Uncharted 1, though clearly hasn't aged as well as the 2 or 3. Yeah. Um, but back at, during that PS3 launch, that was a stunning-looking game. Like, it was insane how good it looked. And a lot of, the, a lot of PS3 games followed suit because... <clears throat> they had to. Same could be said for Killzone 2, actually. Yeah, and that another still PS3 looks launch good, title. in my opinion. It does. And yeah. that's why. That's my point, is that those first without those first-party exclusives, you don't have anybody setting the bar, anybody setting a standard. And then that's where the Ouya failed. They did not have anything set. So what they ended up with was a lot of shovelware i hate to say that word but it's true it's shovelware from android because it was based on android and ouya wasn't stopping them yeah so basically though since nintendo has their essentially their entire back catalog and their ip they're kind of showing here you need to beat this yep and That's... not only that, but because the Switch has the dedicated controllers, mm -hmm. you know, every single one come with it, uh, we should definitely see some good games, you know. And, yeah. you know, that, that leads into, like, something that I've been thinking about a lot is that are the third-party games truly going to be, like, direct ports or you know, uh, developed essentially for all three. Like, for instance, uh, Capcom recently said that they're kind of reviewing it. They're not sure, like, for instance, with Resident Evil 7, mm -hmm. they're not sure if they're going to put it on there, but they do. They, they have games in development that will be on there, but yeah, not necessarily Resident Evil 7. They're which, looking into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the, the word was feasibility, how feasible it is to put their games there. I think it's I think it's extremely feasible in my opinion. I do too, and I want to actually reference something. I know this is gonna make people cringe too. I'm just full of cringe stuff today, so for this topic anyway. Um, when so like when mobile games start, first started blowing up, we saw a lot of games from consoles find their way to these mobile platforms especially iPhone in the beginning and they were generally watered down ish versions of games like Resident Evil 4 for example uh, there's a Metal Gear game um, both of which had similar looks to uh, 
the console versions at the time but they were different gameplay like they had wildly different gameplay Simple. well yeah i mean the, they had the controls were right. you had none really right and i think that um when it comes to the switch i think that's kind of going to kind of be the same case we're looking at but where like they take advantage of what's available um which i guess you could say about mobile games too except for with the switch you have more than touch and tilt you have a full controller or two in some cases heck we don't even know if it has you know touch and tilt you know confirmed i'm i'm positive it does we don't know but i'm positive it does in my opinion it just it has to but um yeah, I think that that's what Nintendo's doing. Because when you look at these proposed rumored specs for the Switch, it lines up perfectly with a top-end tablet. Now, that tablet is well over 500 bucks, But I think if, it, if the, rumor, the other rumor proves to be true that it's a 720p screen and 6 inches, which does look about right... Um, then that cost is reduced dramatically right there. Yeah. You know? And we don't know what iteration of the Tegra X1 or 2 this is. Like, this could be a 1.5 or a Tegra X2 or something like that. You know, we don't really know. And that could play a big role. It could the- actually be like a, a 2.5. Yeah. Something that Nintendo paid extra money for to to make it last longer and perform better, but I'm gonna I'm actually I'm gonna say that it's probably a Tegra X one point five. I think so. I, I think it'll be a Tegra one or X one that has the upgraded Pascal graphics yep. in it. I think so and I think that uh I think before everybody just shoots down this idea and with hate and everything, just go read the article. It's yeah, I'll link it. I'll link it in the description, and uh, you know, definitely comment on on the article too. Yeah, and uh, leave some comments on you know, on this segment. Just We'd go love ahead. to hear what everyone has to say. Uh, yep, definitely. Whatever. Definitely, definitely take a look at the article before you uh, make up your own uh, assumptions about this theory. Because I think there's a lot of valid points to consider. And it's all in the article. Um, I think this one's probably dragged on long enough. So we, we need to move on, but definitely check out the article and leave us some comments. Yep.